Welcome to ESRM. We're super stoked to have you guys here on campus. I'm going to give you a brief overview of both our program and some of the things that I think will be helpful for you to orient yourself at the start of your career here at CSUCI in the Environmental Science and Resource Management Program. First thing to say is that we really are global in extent. These uh, are a bunch of sites right here that um, I have done work in. These are just my sites. If we were to add in all the faculty from ESRM, we would cover much of the globe with red dots and it would be hard to see. Not only are we global in scale, we're also really local. In particular, we're really, really strong right here in Southern California. Our program is strongly field-oriented and student-based. In fact, this background map is actually the location, all the locations of our student capstone, our, our end of your career, year-long research-based project that our students do here in, e here in ESRM to graduate. These are just from this past spring, spring 2018, um, those locations where students collected data. And you'll see where they go all the way from San Diego to the middle of the Central Valley, although most of us are concentrated right here along the southern Santa Barbara, Ventura, and northern Los Angeles uh, coastal zone. This capstone that these students do, that you guys will do, is really unique, both in terms of the offerings here at CSUCI, but really pretty unique across universities across the West. Um, we work with a lot of universities, and many folks do not have um, a culminating experience like we've crafted for you guys. Other unique things about us are our community-based service learning classes. So even though we're really California-focused, we really take our experiences from California and flavor them with uh, global perspectives. And so this coming year, we'll be teaching service learning courses in New Orleans, Costa Rica, and Hawaii. And the Hawaii one will go over winter break. New Orleans and Costa Rica will be over spring break. The opportunities to enroll in those and to apply will come around in the fall semester. I encourage you guys all to think hard about applying to these. School pays two-thirds of the cost. You pay one-third of the trip cost. They really are transformational experiences. All of this, the research, the community-based learning, all this good stuff is really designed to have you have a kick-butt career immediately upon your exiting from CSUCI. So we've designed everything, really all of our courses, all of our offerings, all of our subjects to really be optimized to give you guys a huge boost as you start your career when you graduate. A whole a wide variety of folks employ our students. This is just a small smattering. Everything from federal agencies to private sector. A lot are go, a lot more and more of our students are going into um, Silicon Valley these days. But we go into a mix of education, research, management, all kinds of cool stuff. Um, here's a, a small smattering of some of our recent graduates. So Lisa Cox is down in San Diego uh, with Fish and Wildlife Service. Reed it works for a consulting firm all around the West and does a lot of different endangered species monitoring. Travis um, has been doing um, a master's work. He did his work here on uh, Torrey Pines out on Santa Rosa Island. Cassidy recently just finished her master's degree looking at... Um, plants important to Native Americans and how they utilize them and some of the dynamics of these plants. In this case, she was looking at white sage. Uh, Stephen is also just finishing his master's degree tracking um, wildlife up in the, the desert mountains. Evan is one of our biologists now for one of our local water districts. Uh, Adam uh, works on dealing with oil pollution and, and, and leaking tanks and things like that back in New York. Dorothy, it says Fish and Wildlife Service Condor Technician. She's actually um, in a PhD program up in Oregon working on microplastics. A lot of our uh, program has, um, you know, just too many unique aspects to give you in a brief overview, but suffice it to say, we've really crafted it to be like an onion. Now, some programs um, on campus are, are more traditional. So, um, if you want to say, for example, the chemistry or the biology department, you'll get very similar course offerings if you went to um, a different UCSB or UCLA or, or CSUN or something like that. And that's great. And th those are cool. And there's, there's reasons for that. Our program is really um, very personalized and very tailored for uh, the challenges that we see coming up. And so our program is really focused on, for example, applied skills. We also have a strong, strong focus on data analysis and writing. So some of you guys are strong writers, some of you are horrible writers, but by the end, you guys will all be decent writers. You need to be able to communicate quantitative information 
um, to both technical folks as well as the general public if we really want to solve a lot of these challenges that, that are coming up, um, that we're facing us now and will face us in the coming years. I really want to encourage you guys to, to go meet us. Come say hi to us. Come say hi to the faculty. This is just a subset of our faculty members. But pop into their office hours. Come say hi. Um, get to know us so that we can also get to know you. And that's how we can really help you guys. Don't wait till you have a problem. Come say hi even when you're just you know walking down the corridor. You can do that by popping into our office hours um, or coming into any of our labs in Sierra Hall or elsewhere. Um, really, as long as I have office hours or, or one of our faculty members have office hours, you can come on in. Don't feel like you have to have a specific agenda item. You can pop in, say hi for a minute or two. All of our office hours are posted just outside of our office door. Um, there will also be, not right now, it's the summertime, but come fall, come spring, they'll be posted online as well. So, so you guys can totally look us up, pop on by anytime my door is open, anytime I have scheduled office hours. And if those don't work, reach out to me and we can find a time that works uh, to chat. We have two emphases in ESRM, one, one environmental science, the other resource management. These will be probably evolving uh, in the not too distant future, but for now, um, just know that the initial part, the, the first year or two of uh, both of these emphases, they don't differ at all. So we're just going to focus on some general principles and I'm going to make some general recommendations for the classes you should enroll in in, your, in, in, the, in the start of your experience here at CSUCI. A few general principles we've developed over the years. The first is that um, you should take an average of 15 units per semester. So you can take a bit less um, on one semester, but then you'd have to take a bit more uh, the next. So on average, we want you guys to be hitting 15 units per semester. That'll allow you to graduate in four years. Next, we really need you to take ESRM 100 as soon as you possibly can. That's really the gateway course for all the rest of our, of our offerings. So take ESRM either your first semester or maybe your second semester. Um, related is uh, ESRM 200. Uh, 100 is really an introduction to environmental science. 200 is really an introduction to resource management, which tends to be more the human dimensions of, of managing our natural resources. Think uh, an old cowboy on the back of a horse trying to figure out, you know, talking to a farmer and figuring out how much uh, and how long he should allow these cattle to, to graze on this land. So 200 is a, ESRM 200 is a lot about trail maintenance and, and, and things of that nature, more the human side of resource management issues. Now you can take either 200 or 205, either one, you don't have to take both. Uh, I just told you about 200. 205 is our introduction to sustainability science. So if you're interested in sustainability, energy systems, waste streams, things of that nature, you should take 205. 205 is traditionally offered in the fall. 200 is traditionally offered in the spring. Get those, uh, get your 100 and your 200 slash 205 requirement taken care of early, and that'll open the gateway for all the cool upper division classes. We really want you guys to come, and, and again, uh, ESRM is very interdisciplinary. Really, um, the, the initial, the first year or two, is really designed for you to take stuff mostly outside of ESRM. That's your economics, that's your biology, that kind of stuff. So we'd like you guys to complete all of those um, parts of the major, those required classes, in your first two years. Next, when you start to take um, the more ESRM primary courses, that's really going to be, you know, in theory, that's the start of your junior year, although you could start earlier if you wanted to. But I really want to flag ESRM 328 and 313. Those are your gateway. Those are your entrance courses to subsequent um, ESRM classes. So 328 is our introduction to GIS. That's how to make maps and use computers to make really neat um, spatial uh, interpretations of the natural world. ESRM 313 is, in, is conservation biology. Conservation biology we really crafted to be your um, uh, introduction to all, not just the disciplinary stuff of conservation biology, which is the most important thing, but, but also reading a lot of peer-reviewed papers, original literature, writing scientific uh, papers, that kind of stuff. So, so 313 is also not just about conservation biology, but about the skills you'll need to succeed in upper division courses and beyond. So try to target those two very, very early in your junior year, if not just before the start of your junior year. 
Historically, sometimes people have decided they want to focus on getting their GEs, their general education requirements, out of the way at the beginning. I don't recommend that because we're so interdisciplinary and because we don't control the schedule of the economics department or the chemistry department, we sometimes have conflicts in schedules where you can't take things exactly in the order we'd like you to. But you should be focused on trying to take your major requirements first. And then if you have one of those uh, blips, which will, you know, I'm sure happen at some point, um, then you can plug in a GE. There's many, many more options for, say, your art GE or your critical thinking GE um, in any given semester at any given time than there are for our particular major required classes. So focus on the major first and then fill in GEs uh, when needed. Lastly, I want to really encourage you guys to immerse yourself in ESRM research. Do it early, do it often. That's really what's going to help you guys get the kick butt jobs and, and, and really start your career. Volunteer, volunteer, volunteer. Let's get you in the lab. Work with me if you want. Work with Dr. Patch, Dr. Reinemann, Dr. Steele, Dr. Wu, anybody. But start volunteering early and, and let's get you building some, some key parts of your resume as soon as possible. Now, you can come in and volunteer with research at any point and, and just pop on in, but there really are a, a couple classes that uh, if you have taken them will actually help you that much, uh, get started that much quicker in terms of our research stuff. The first is our 301, which is our field professionalism. That's a one unit class and the topics vary. For example, wilderness first aid, how to safely operate our boat, all those kind of things. That's offered in both fall and spring. That's usually typically uh, not like a regularly scheduled every day of the week class. It's usually offered, for example, our wilderness first aid is offered over one weekend, eight hours Saturday, eight hours Sunday, but it's it's a it's one discrete time block. I already mentioned 328, our introduction to GIS. That is offered in both fall and spring. Field methods, which is where we teach you guys how to do transects, count fish, count birds, that kind of stuff. That's typically offered in the spring. And then 370, which is called Fundamentals of Remotely Piloted Systems, but most people know it as Intro to Drones. People call it Intro to Drones class. That's where we teach you guys how to fly uh, Aerial robots, um, also swimming robots too, but 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 the uh, the most of the work is on the flying of the aerial stuff because of the FAA and all these uh, constraints. Um, that's typically offered in the spring, and then a new class, which is a great class, uh, really will, will help mainstream you into into research called coastal contaminants. We've had a little bit of an administrative burp, so it hasn't started yet. So we're currently teaching it under the moniker of ESRM 410, but but after this year, it'll have its own. Um, its own uh, unique new number, but we offer that in the spring. That's where we teach you guys how to throw water quality probes into streams and measure the contaminant levels of, of bacteria and oxygen levels and all that kind of good stuff. Please, please, please manage your time well. One of the biggest constraints that um, some of you guys have is not, plan is not, not adequately budgeting your time. You guys can uh, go to college, you guys can have a social life. You guys can get a job. A lot of you guys uh, have work at least part-time to pay for school, and I totally get that. I worked four part-time jobs at the same time to pay for my college when I, was, when I was an undergrad, so I totally get it. You can do two of the three well. You cannot do all three of these well. You cannot have a killer, killer social life and a you know, job and do well in school. So, so realize that and, and make your choices accordingly but really do think really hard about how you're going to plan out your semester and how you're going to plan out your time. All kinds of wonderful options uh, for support here, but I just want to flag a couple really, really briefly. That would be things like our writing center, free to all students, all time. You guys have a problem with writing, go over there. You have a question about writing, go over there. Um, question making powerpoints go talk to those folks again you can always come talk to us your faculty please do come talk to us but you can also get additional help through these other resources like the writing center we also have the stem tutoring center in el dorado hall where you'll learn if you're if you're having problems with whatever um, intro to chemistry there's there's wonderful resources there both resources as well as other peers that can help that have been through the class that can help you with homework and all that kind of good stuff we have a ton of support systems um, it, please use them, use them, use them. Go check them out. Even if you don't think you're going to use them, go check them out anyway. They're wonderful sources of help throughout your career here at CSUCI. 
for your first year, this is my suggestion for what courses that would be ideal for you to take um, your first semester, your first fall semester, and your uh, spring semester. Also, by, by spring, I hope you guys will have started volunteering and with uh, one or more of our professors and helping them out on some of the research and starting to get some um, outside the classroom experience as well. Real briefly, um, again, want to please, please invite you guys to apply for some of our killer trips, either to New Orleans or to Costa Rica or to Hawaii this coming year. They're really, really awesome. You'll have a great old time. I really also want to encourage you not just to, to take some classes, but realize some of our research projects are more individual. Others, like our um, weekly AARR meeting, is, is a, just a, a set time. Usually it's Fridays at noon. Everybody comes in. We check in really briefly, and so we have lab meetings. So some of us have routine lab meetings. Some of us have more individualized stuff, but those are all of those are wonderful ways to get involved. Come by, even if you're not actively working a research project, sit in on some of our lab meetings and start getting a sense of what people do. Finally, um, you can check out our regular website, esrm.csuci.edu. That's our formal one that's required of, uh, uh, that, that sticks to all the strictures of the university and we're required to have, and it's fine, but it's kind of ugly and clunky and we don't have much freedom over it esrm.zone that's the whole website esrm.zone there's no .com no no .org or anything but esrm.zone is really our new landing pad for all the information so info on on news stuff social media feeds job opportunities all that stuff you should be checking that out all the time so check out esrm.zone the next three here are examples of some of our blogs our aarr is for our robotic stuff our oil is for our work with oil spills and pollution nola.pyrolab.org is our class blog for a New Orleans class. And if you want to get more of a sense of what some of these classes are like, in particular my classes, if you search for me and ESRM on YouTube, you'll find virtually all of my lectures are up on YouTube and you can, um, you know, you don't have to watch them now, but you know, I would encourage you guys to listen to the first few minutes, first five minutes or so of a couple different ones. That'll give you a real good sense of what our upper division classes in particular are like. Um, so check out all those resources, knock around, play around, read some of the blogs, get to know ESRM. We're super stoked you're here. We can't wait to see you guys in uh, our classes. I can't wait you to see, see you in my first class that I have you in. And I just want to wish you guys a great start of the year. And please pop on by my office whenever. Drop me a line. Say hi. Have a great start of your ESRM CSUCI career.